Hi everyone, um, we're looking at graphs of primary trig functions um, and we're also going to look at their transformations as well. Um, so just a reminder that you've been looking at trig functions since you were in grade 11 um, and here is how uh, it looks with uh, radian measures. So don't forget that in the unit circle sine is y and um, cosine is x. And also remember on the unit circle, um, these coordinates right here are going to be 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. And now that we are looking at um, radians, we know that this is going to be 0, this is pi over 2, this is pi, and then this is 3 pi over 2. Okay, so if we're talking about sine, um, sine is always going to be y, so it goes from 0 to 1 to 0 to negative 1 and back to 0. And that's what's happening here, 0 to 1 to 0 to negative 1 back to 0. Just like we did with degrees, but instead of 0, 90, 180, 270, we're using um, our radians, okay? And then cosine is the x value, so the x value starts at 1, um, and then it goes to 0 to negative 1 uh, to 0, back up to 1 so on and so forth, okay? So if you ever forget which one starts at zero, which one starts at one, you just have to look back at the unit circle and it will tell you. Now we will go back and look at um, the rest of these boxes here, but first I want to talk about the transformations of trig functions first. Um, so just a reminder that in general, when we have transformations in general, the A value will always tell you if you have a um, vertical stretch or compression. And it will also tell you if you have a vertical flip. So in other words, um, that means that you would have a reflection in the x-axis. Well, what does that have to do with a sine function? Well, if I have a sine function or a cosine function, and it normally looks like this, but now it is vertically stretched or it is vertically compressed, that tells us the amplitude. So the absolute value of A will tell us um, the amplitude. And then still, it will also tell us if we have a reflection in the x-axis or not. So for example, um, if A is negative, then it's going to look uh, the opposite direction, okay? The next parameter that we have here is the k value. And the k value is going to tell us if we have a horizontal stretch or compression. Um, but it will also tell us if we have a horizontal flip. So in other words, if we have a reflection in the y-axis. So what will that tell us in um, this example right here? Well, if I have a horizontal stretch, so now it's um, stretched out horizontally, or if I have a horizontal compression, This is going to tell us how long it takes to complete one full period. So the k value here is related to the period. And a normal period in a normal cycle, in a normal um, sine or cosine cycle, it would take one, uh, 360 degrees to complete a full cycle, just like <clears throat> it takes 360 degrees to go around the complete unit circle, which is 2 pi in radians. But don't forget that um, the scale factor here is actually going to be 1 over k. Right? If you remember from last year, you have to multiply by 1 over k. So right here, um, to find the period, you take 2 pi and multiply it by 1 over k. But we can just say right here that the period is 2 pi over k. Like if I multiply this through, I get 2 pi over k. So this is a really important um, piece of information that we need to know. And then if I want to rearrange, I can also say that the k value would be 2 pi over p. So if I isolate the k instead, the k value would be equal to 2 pi over the period. Now, if you remember the d value, the d value always tells us the um, horizontal shift. Are we moving right or are we moving left? But it doesn't have any impact on the size of the graph. Okay, so this would be like a horizontal shift to the right. In a sine function, this is always called a phase shift, but it's the same thing. Are you moving right? Are you moving left? And then lastly, 
Um, the last piece of information that we have here is the C value. And the C value always tells us a vertical shift. Are we going up? Are we going down? So, for example, um, in this graph right here, uh, if I were to move it up, I would need to figure out what axis this is centered around right here. But it would look the same. It would just be... Um, either above or below where it normally would be. So in a trig function, we need to have this line that this is centered around. This line is called the axis. So the C value will always tell us the axis. What is this uh, function centered around? What is the horizontal line that the function is centered around? But please be careful about this because even though I say it's a horizontal line, it's still going to be y equals um, c, right? So it's always going to be y equals c. So it is still a vertical shift. You're still moving it up. You're still moving it down. It just happens to be a horizontal line that it is centered around. Okay, now two other things that I want to bring your attention to um, are this is sign as the parent function, but this would also work if we had a cosine here, okay? And then the other thing that I want to bring your attention to, which is super duper important, I can't even stress this enough right here, this K must be factored out. Just like when we, do, when we did our transformations last year, the K has to be, has to be, has to be, factored out. Okay, so um, I wrote the general equation uh, on top of this next example so we can refer back to it. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is find the A value. Remember the A value tells us our amplitude and here our A value is 1. So that means that our amplitude would have to be equal to 1. The next thing that I want to bring your attention to is the K value. The K value is 1 over 8 which means that our scale factor is 8, right? It's the reciprocal of 1 over 8. But don't forget to find our period. It's going to be 2 pi over k. So it's going to be 2 pi over 1 over 8. I'd multiply by 8 to cancel that out, multiply by 8 to cancel that out. So I get 16 pi over 1, which is 16 pi. So our period is going to be 16 pi. And that should make sense to you because if our scale factor is 8 and a normal period would be 2 pi, that means that it is 8 times bigger, so it would now be 16 pi. Okay, the d value right here, if you take a look, there is nothing here um, that is being added or subtracted onto the angle. So here, that means that our d value is 0. So that means that we have no phase shift. And then lastly, our C value is 2. That means everything is shifted up by 2, which means that the equation of the axis is no longer at y equals 0, which it normally was at. It is now at y equals 2. So our axis is at y equals 2. Okay? Um, I also just want to go back to what we had said about the period as well. Um, so the period in radians is 2 pi over k, but the period in degrees is 360 degrees over k. So I just want you to also know that because sometimes we're going to be doing things in degrees. Uh, now that we know radians doesn't mean we're exclusively using radians. It will be interchangeable. We will be going back and forth. Okay, the other thing that I want to bring your attention to as well is the fact that um, each one of these graphs here, each one of these parent graphs is broken up into four pieces, right? So we've got from here, from 0 to pi over 2, from pi over 2 to pi, from pi to 3 pi over 2, from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4 equal pieces. And just like um, we split up the unit circle into one, two, three, four equal pieces. So that's really important right here. We're going to call each one of these pieces a critical interval. So that's one last thing that we want to write down right here as well. So we have a critical interval. And our critical interval here is one fourth of this period right here. So I'm going to take the period, divide it by four, and my critical interval is going to be four pi. Okay. And that's going to also help me with my scaling as well. So we'll talk about that in a minute. So now I want to um, set up my x and my y axes. So I'm going to put my y axis right here. I'm going to put my x axis a little bit lower. 
and I'll explain why in a minute. So this right here would be zero, okay? We know that our, our um, axis is at y equals two. So that means everything is shifted up by two. And we also know that our amplitude is one. So if I make this positive one, positive two, positive three, you're gonna see here, we're gonna draw in um, our axis at y equals two. So this is the, the horizontal line that the entire graph is centered around. Okay, and because our amplitude is one right here, that means that we are, that our graph is going to go above the axis by one and below the axis by one, which means that our maximum value that we are going to reach here is going to be three. This is gonna be our max because it's two plus one. Okay, and then our minimum value that we're going to reach is going to be 1. Because this is 2 minus 1. So we know that our graph is going to be oscillating between these values right here. Okay, um, and then the critical interval is going to really help us out with our scale on the x-axis. So we need to fit at least 16 pi to show a full period. And we need to show um, every four pi what's happening here. So I'm going to um, go by, I'm gonna show like this is four pi, eight pi, 12 pi, 16 pi. This is gonna show me a full cycle. And because we are graphing out cosine right here, we know that cosine, um, the parent cosine graph always starts at the max and ends at the max to complete a full cycle. So this is going to start at the max, it's going to end at the max, and then this right here is one full cycle. We know that every critical interval right here is going to take four pi. So that means that at four pi right here, we are going to be at the axis, just like, um, in the, in the parent graph, um, after a quarter of the cycle, we'll be hitting the axis. And then after another quarter of the cycle, we'll be hitting the minimum. After another quarter cycle, we'll be hitting the axis again. And then I'll do another full cycle. So we know that this is going to end at 32 pi. Go a quarter of the way, hit the axis. A quarter of the way, hit the minimum. A quarter of the way, hit the axis. And then this right here is my function. Okay? Okay, in our next example, um, we have to make sure that we remember to factor out um, whatever the k value is. So here, I have to factor out the k value, which is 3, right here. So I'm going to factor out that 3. So remember, when you factor things out by common factoring, you're going to divide it out. So I'm going to take pi over 2, and I'm going to divide that by 3. But pi over 2, when I divide that by 3, is the same thing as pi over 2 times 1 third. So this right here means I'm going to have pi, um, pi over 6. So right here, when I factor out that 3, I get minus pi over 6. Okay, so what is this going to tell us right here? Same thing, our amplitude here is still going to be 1. Our um, k value here is going to be pi over 6. Our k value is going to be 3. So that tells us that our period is going to be 2 pi over 3. Okay, so it's going to take us 2 pi over 3 to complete a full cycle. Okay, let's use that to find our critical interval. So our critical interval, I'm just going to write as ci from now on, means I need to take 2 pi over 3 and divide that by 4. So I'm going to take 2 pi over 3 and multiply that by a fourth. So I get 2 pi over 12. So my critical interval is going to be pi over 6. Okay, then um, I also need to take a look at my uh, the d value and the d value here is going to be positive pi over two because remember it's always the opposite sign right here um, because of that minus sign. So that means that uh, that my phase shift is going to be pi over two to the right. Okay, um, and then there's no, the C value here is, to, is zero. There's no shift in my C value right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up our axes. Now, because my um, 
axis is at zero here, I'll just put uh, my x-axis right in the middle. This will be positive one. This will be negative one right here. So we know that our axis is going to be at zero. So here's where our axis is going to be at. Um, I just made it a little bit thicker so you can see it over the x-axis. We know that our amplitude is one. So I'd go one above the um, axis, which is at zero and one below it. So these are our minimum and our maximum, okay? Um, and sorry, I accidentally wrote pi over two right here. This should say pi over six. So let's fix this in our phase shift. This should also say pi over six. And then this phase shift right here should also say pi over six right here. Sorry about that, people. What, this is a little bit tricky right now because we have to figure out how we want to scale the x-axis. Um, but we have pi over six here, pi over six here, but this is two pi over three. So um, I want to like write this with a common denominator. So this is in terms of... Um, out of six, this is four pi over six. So this right here would tell us that um, one period is four pi over six, and a critical interval would be pi over six, and that should make sense to us because you need four pi over sixes to make four pi over six, okay? So um, when I make my scale right here, I'm gonna put right here, I'll say like maybe this right here is, so say maybe right here, this is pi over six, this would be two pi over six, which is pi over three. This would be three pi over six, which is pi over two. So I'll just write this down right here, that this is two pi over six, that this right here is three pi over six. And then this one right here would be four pi over six, which is two pi over three, okay? This would be five pi over six. This would be six pi over six, which is pi. This would be 7 pi over 6, and then this right here would be 8 pi over 6, which reduces to pi over 3, okay? So I have all the information I need in order to be able to do my graph, um, but I want you to pay really close attention to this next thing right here. So I'm going to plot out where the points would be without the phase shift. So I'm not going to worry about the phase shift quite yet. So what I what I need to do right here is figure out what this is going to look like without the phase shift. So sine, we know that sine always starts on the axis and finishes on the axis. So we know that this would, without the phase shift, it would start at zero. And then after a full complete period, which is two pi over three, we know it's going to complete the full cycle. And we also know that about, that at a quarter of the way through, which is our critical interval right here, this pi over six, it's going to reach its max. Another quarter of the way through, it's going to reach the axis. Another quarter of the way through, it's going to reach its min. And then another quarter of the way through, it's going to reach the axis. I'm going to do the same thing. So right here, it completes a full cycle after another two pi over three, quarter of the way through, max, quarter of the way through, uh, axis, quarter of the way through, min, and then axis. So these are the points that I would have without the phase shift. Now, to figure out the phase shift, I would take each one of these points and do what it says right here. I'd go pi over six to the right. So if you look right here, our first point here is at zero. I take the zero and I'd go pi over six to the right. So this right here would be my actual point on my graph. I take the next point, which is up here, and I'd go pi over six to the right. So this right here would be the next actual point on the graph. Next point right here, I take this pi over six to the right. So this is my actual point on the graph right here. Pi over six to the right, actual point on the graph. Pi over six to the right. Pi over six to the right. Now in this example, our phase shift is equal to the critical interval. So it ends up looking like this right here, but that's not always going to necessarily be the case. And sorry, this last one that I did right here should be pi over six to the right down here. So this should reach the minimum, okay? And then I can bring this back right here and I know that another quarter of the way through, it would be right here. Um, okay, so this is the way that this graph would look. Okay, in this last example, let's do uh, the same thing that we normally would do. 
except first I need to make sure that I factor out that K value. So here, my K value this time is going to be 4 pi, right? That's what's in front of the X right here. So I'm going to factor out this 4 pi. When I factor out this 4 pi, I have an X left over, and then I need to figure out what this 2 pi over 3 is going to be when I divide it out by 4 pi. So I'm going to take 2 pi over 3, I'm going to divide it by um, 4 pi, okay? I'm doing this a different way than I've done previously, just so that you can see that there are a few different ways that we could do this. So I'm going to just put this down here. Um, so I'm going to multiply by 3 to cancel these 3s out. Multiply by 3 here. So I get 2 pi over 12 pi. The pi's cancel. This reduces to 1 sixth. So right here, our phase shift is going to be 1 sixth. The k value the D value here is one sixth. And then I'm just gonna copy the rest of this down. So for starters, here, this tells me that my amplitude is going to be two. That's the A value right here. We know that the K value is equal to four pi, which means that the scale factor is one over four pi. So to find the period, we would take two pi, divide that by four pi. Um, again, because the period is two pi over K, so then I would, um, the pi's would cancel, so you'd get 2 over 4, which is 1 half. So we know that our period is 1 half, okay? Our amplitude is 2. We also know that our um, d value is 1 over 6, so that means that we have a phase shift of 1 over 6 to the right. And then we have um, our our C value here is three. So that means that the equation of the axis is gonna be Y equals three. Let's go ahead and set up our axes, our X and Y axes right here. Now, if our axis right here is going to be at Y equals three, and um, our amplitude is two, that means that our max is gonna be five, and our min is going to be 1. So that means that we don't really need um, a, a, the negative y values. So I'm going to put my x-axis kind of lower. And um, the equation of the axis is going to be at 3 right here. So um, we'll say this is one, this is two, three, I'll just go by ones. So two, four, six, we know that the equation of the axis is at three. We know that the min is at one, and that the max is at five. Now we have to figure out how to scale the x axis. But before we do that, we still have to find our critical interval. And our crit critical interval means we take our period and break it up into fours. So I'm taking the one half and breaking it up into fours. So that means that my critical interval would be one over eight. So we have a little bit of a problem here because our period is one half, our critical interval is one eighth, and our phase shift is 1 over 6. So this is a little bit tricky because we don't really know how to scale this. So our scale is going to have to be like our common denominator here. Our x-axis scale is going to be our common denominator. So I've got a denominator of 2, 6, and 8. So the common denominator of 2, 6, and 8 is 24. So we can say here that our period is going to be 12 over 24. We can say that our phase shift right here is going to be 4 over 24, and that our critical interval right here is going to be 3 over 24. So that means our scale is going to need to be 1 over 24. So if you take a look at this graph right here, um, there's 24 spots on the x-axis right here. So we can say like this is 1 over 24, 2 over 24, right? 3 over 24, 4 over 24, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 over 24. This is like 1 half or 12 over 24. 
13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. This is like just the whole one. Okay. Now we're talking about cosine here. I'm going to graph everything out without the phase shift for right now. So we're talking about cosine right here. And cosine um, starts at the maximum and ends at the maximum. And we know that the phase shift is we know that the period is 12 24ths. So that means that it's going to complete a full cycle in one half right here. So it starts at the max, ends at the max. Again, this is without the phase shift. We, we also know that a quarter of a cycle is 1 8th or 3 24ths. So we know that the next critical point, our, uh, uh, because our critical interval is 3 out of 24, our next critical point is going to be at 3 out of 24. So that's going to reach the axis at 3 out of 24. The next one is going to be 3 out of 24 later, so 6 out of 24. So it's going to reach the minimum at 6 out of 24. It's going to reach the axis at 9 out of 24, and then it's going to reach the max at 12 out of 24. And then do the same thing again. The next critical um, point is 3 out of 24 later, so and then another 3 out of 24 later, and then another 3 out of 24 later, and then another 3 out of 24 later. So this is what this looks like without the phase shift. But then the phase shift is 1 over 6 um, to the right, or 4 24ths. So if I were to um, look at this right here, this is going to go 4 out of 24 to the right. So this is going to go 4 out of 24 to the right. Um, 4 out of 24 to the right right here is going to be this next point right here. Shift this point 4 out of 24 to the right. Shift this point 4 out of 24 to the right. Shift this point 4 out of 24 to the right. And I would just keep going 4 out of 24 to the right over and over and over again. 4 out of 24 to the right. Um, and then if you look right here, because our critical interval is 3 out of 24, if I were to work backwards right here, we can go 3 out of 24 to the left, and that would bring me back down to my um, axis right here. So we know that our graph would look like this. So this right here would be the graph of this g of x function right here. And that's it for this video. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you in class. Have a good one. Bye.